Hello everyone again. Uh, today I'm bringing you a replay that I played just now against this elder. Um, since it was requested, the uh, Austria game versus Soviet matchup. Uh, we are going to look into that matchup today. Uh, disclaimer that Isildur did have a full uh, bottle of red wine before this game, so maybe he's not playing at his full capacity right here. Either way, I thought that the early game was good enough to show the fundamentals of a good Austria early game. Unfortunately, this replay doesn't get to the late game stages, so I'm probably going to have to do a second video with another replay that does reach the late game stage to more or less explain what to do then. Either way, uh, I think this replay works just fine for the early game and I think the early game is probably the most important stage of any Company of Heroes match, so it's all good. Uh, so yeah, this is a Nazi vs Soviet matchup. Isildur right away locks in the meta Soviet commander, I, I would say. And I'm going to turn the Fog of War. Maybe I'll do it on so everyone has the same kind of vision that I have. So first of all, I'm bringing my Pioneer to the right. It's important that I do this so I can get a hold of this right field. And my MG instantly follows the Pioneer to the same part of the map. I also do here a little cap with the Pioneer and wait for the MG to get there. Uh, it's a little detail, but it helps to cap just a little bit faster. Either way, you want to do this of teaming up the Pioneer with the MG because the Pioneer has a lot of sight. You can see right here that I can see like to the end of the road right there. Uh, now the MG takes over on this side. The MG is positioned just before the Pioneer. So if a conscript squad appears from here or here, I know that. And my grenadier will just cap these two points. Uh, it's important because these two points give a lot of fuel. That's going to be important for the 2-2-2 timing. It's a bit risky right now that I have all the units separate. But that's okay if you can keep the vision with the pioneer up. Right now I'm waiting for a conscript squad or engineer squad to come over from here. And my second Grenadier and the first Grenadier will now join the MG so he doesn't get flanked. I also now know that my opponent capped the middle VP and I suspect it might be a Conscript squad. And I know that I haven't seen a squad on the right side which is unusual. So I know that my opponent is probably, probably has some kind of unit in the center. And most likely one or two units as well on this side of the map. Which if I, if I take the Fog of War off... That's exactly what he, do, he does have. So now I'm advancing with the Pioneer, always first, to give vision. I know there's a Conscript squad right now on the Munition Point. And I just spotted an Engineer squad in the center as well with my Grenadier. Now, because I know that there's a lone Conscript squad on this side of the map, I can fairly, you know, fairly, I can be fairly certain that the rest or the bulk of his units are somewhere here on the fog of war. So I need to be careful about this side of the map and the incoming units that can come from there. So because of that I also I also know that my MG is fairly safe since I can expect that no second conscript is going to flank this MG. And I kinda keep this pioneer scouting this conscript squad always. So if he does get out of my range of vision, I kind of go up with the Pioneer to keep vision on, the, on that squad. And the MG also goes forward. Now because of what I said earlier, and I brought this on my tips, tips video, which was the last one, of keeping track of important units, I know that uh, his units are coming from here. So I uh, put down my, I mean, I retreat my Grenadier a bit put him into cover and I don't mind giving him this point right here because he's going to be mispositioned in the map. If he doesn't deal with my MG I'm going to be able to push to his cutoffs and it's going to be a stronger approach than he will have on me because it's basically on his hands to get rid of my MG right now. 
Anyways, he suspects that I have the MG around here, so this conscript squad lays back a bit. I'm going to start building my third grenadier soon. And I keep this grenade in the center, so I spot a possible conscript squad doing this route right here. If he tries to do this to get to my MG, I'll know, and I'll be already firing some shots at him. Right now I see this conscript squad backing away as well, and my MG instantly moves to deal with that new maneuver, and my pioneer tries and, and see where he went, and there he is. He's also decapping these points. Again, this is a risky maneuver from him, and he's trying to play aggressive. Thing is that even if he does decap this point and this point, which will delay the 2-2, which is kind of the objective that Soviets have right here, I know that as soon as my third grenadier is up, and I can reinforce near my base, so this conscript squad is super um, behind lines, so I can basically single him out and do the numbers advantage rule that I kind of talked about in the last couple of videos. And as soon as I have this conscript out of the picture, I can then start capping everything. He also places two conscript squads, he's trying to stall my advance right here. It won't matter though, because right now, I feel very comfortable uh, with the MG firing at the conscript squad. I know that soon enough, this conscript squad will be either suppressed or damaged enough by MG that my Pyo can move in. And I know that this conscript squad for sure is going to be back to base really soon. And that will soon give me a really big numbers advantage on the field. He also bleeds a bit of manpower right here. I get that conscript back. And this grenadier, instead of going for this point, he just ignores the engineer. Why? Because I want to make a maneuver on this point right here and this point right here. So that I can basically catch up to what he did until, until now. So if I went ahead and started capping these points right here, I would the delay of uh, denying his resources would be very big. While if I start already going to the to his cutoff, I can be sure that I can cut off this whole territory right here, and that I can basically pay off the two points that he just cut off from me from li for like a minute. Anyways. I know that one conscript is back to base. This one just got suppressed from DMG. That happens a lot. Pioneer instantly moves in to get that conscript back to base as well and decap the point. MG moves forward. And he now has to back off from the center. And this is what I meant. MG coming forward, supporting. He has to back off yet again. Grenadiers come forward. And this is a very hard position for the Soviet player to dislodge right now. He has a flamethrower, but he can just kind of kite that away and keep at a distance. I also start pack capping just with one grenadier. And why am I doing this? Because I know that I, uh, I have a very good position on the front line right here. And I also know that I placed two units for, that he had on the, on, the, on the map back to base. So I can be comfortable also using a grenadier now to slowly cap away his points. Unfortunately, he did a good defense here and he had two units ready for the cutoff maneuver, so I couldn't do that. He also has an engineer behind my lines, which I need to deal with. And right here, this is an engagement he's always going to lose, it's always a matter of time. That's the thing Austria is really good at, is you need to be really patient about the engagements, because it's like, at some point the bubble is going to burst, and you're going to win the engagement, because you can't hold the long range engagements for long. Uh, that means that you just need to be patient and wait for the MG to suppress or the Grandiers to eventually ship away at the conscripts and then you slowly move into the closer to his cutoffs and get his resources. Obviously the Grenadier is going to win this engagement, he just decapped the point for about 20 seconds. He also tries to do a flank maneuver. Again, because of the early engagements that he did, his con conscript squads are starting to come out of the base with lower HP. And as long as I keep my pioneer near my MG and the grenadiers, this MG is always going to be safe. 
And right now this grenadier is still back capping uh, the points that he capped and I'm still maintaining a good front line. It's also important to know that because I have this advantage and I want to snowball my advantage, as soon as I hit tier 2, which is battle phase 1, I retreat my pioneer back to base to not waste time and put that structure up and have the 2 to 2 by a good time. Again, he's trying to apply a bit of pressure so I don't go for this cutoff. I'm already moving to this cutoff though. And again, this unit won't do much and my front line will still be a very tough one to break. Again, it doesn't let me uh, go for this cutoff. And notice that as soon as I see that uh, he has two conscript squads here. There's no point in leaving this Grenadier even one second here later, because you might drop another model and again, you don't want manpower bleed, as Austria especially. Instead I retreat from this unit, and I try to follow his conscripts around with the MG. This is something that you should really practice when playing as Austria. Your MG needs to be moving all the time and kind of following around his conscripts, so your opponent never has 100% uh, accuracy or on where your MG is. And again, I know that he's trying to get to this cover. As soon as I have that unit su suppressed, I also know that my Grenadier will for sure win the engagement, so all I need to do now is uh, turn the MG back to this new squad, or run away. And here I'm trying to bring his conscript, conscript squad a bit more to the right, so it doesn't influence this engagement right here. So if I lose this engagement, I can be sure that I win this one, because he won't have this conscript supporting this one. Uh, I also saw the conscript squad earlier coming to this side, so I had the grenadier ready, and I do a pretty good grenade on them. And I go for his cutoff again, because this conscript is trying to chase away the MG, which is now back to base. Now, something really important that I'm thinking right now um, at this particular part of the match is that I already dealt a lot of manpower damage. If you notice, he already did a lot of retreats, he already bled a lot of manpower. Even though he is a Soviet, that's still important. Now, I have the 2 2 2 out by a really good timing. And I'm also building the Medic Bunker, because I know that I have some low health units. And because of that, that I know that I might play more manpower and I want to preserve the manpower, I insta retreat this Grenadier as well, because he's not going to do much here. Even if he wins this engagement, it won't accomplish much, he's, he probably has new units coming out from base. Payo kinda trying to stop the sandbags from going up. And now this is the important bit, which is when you have the advantage, especially as um, as Ossier here, the 2-2-2 two -two -two is a really good unit to harass the opponent. So right now I'm thinking one thing. I bled him a lot of manpower. He's probably still trying to get that T-70 up. Because I haven't seen the any of the units from his commander yet, so right now I don't know what he, what commander he went for. So I'm expecting that he's still trying to go for a T70. And because of all the the bleed and because uh, if you want to rush a T70, you really can't use m much of your fuel. I'm expecting that he for sure doesn't have 18, 18 aids up. And if he, even if he does, uh, my pioneer is uh, close enough to, 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 to that it won't matter. So I can be safe in just pushing my 2-2-2 right up to the conscript squad for maximum damage. And now I see this MG and th this is critical, so... Uh, it's really important that you notice the kind of tech that your opponent is doing. And in Zilder right here he went for the meta Soviet commander and he went for the MG, the Colin. So I know now that the T-70 for sure is super far away. And I eat that he's going for an infantry heavy build with mini AT guns and MGs. Of 
Right now I'm just harassing with the 2 2 In the center, he's trying to do a push. Conscript suppressed. He still gets around this MG. Also, I'm not afraid to rush his MG with the 2 2 2. And right now what's in my mind as well, since I went for this command that, that you can say is like the meta austere commander after Austroop and uh, were nerfed, and this is the balance preview. Uh, I know that I need the munitions to start upgrading the grenadiers, and that costs 60 munitions. So notice that even though I could have grenaded these conscripts, quite I don't, because I want to start scaling up my grenadiers. Again, instantly, I don't care that he's decapping my fuel on the right. I just care about his cutoffs. Again, I know that he probably doesn't have AT grenades because of all the bleed and position he's in, so I just rush my 2 near the conscript squad. And I now see the mini AT gun as well. And this uh, tells me, again, that my unit composition right now needs to be full on anti infantry. Notice that I didn't even start building a pack at any point right here because that would just give me a useless unit again full on cutoff maneuvers right here it's important that you evaluate what's best for you because i know i can push him off the map it's better for me to instantly go for these points because I know that they're going to give me a, a lot more advantage over my opponent than backcapping whatever he capped. That's the same for that early game. If you can cut off, it's much better than just backcapping whatever he capped. You just backcap what he capped if you know that you can't push him off the map or even get near any of the cutoff points. Mine goes off, two getting repaired as well. Again, I know that I can't win this engagement, so instant re retreat right there. And now I go to deal with the unit that he has on the right. And this Grenadier will try to stall and give me vision of his units. Already getting a second MG. Notice that, again, I didn't go for a pack, I went for a second MG right here, so I'm going to have 4 Grenadiers and 2 MGs. And that's a really th tough thing to break. Um, especially because I know that this unit composition sucks at dealing with MGs right now. All you can do to deal with my MGs is try to have the Dishka come up and shoot at my MG. So that makes the second MG really good here. Again, instant retreat, I don't bleed manpower right here. Grenadier is at half HP, I just get him back to base. I keep my Grenadiers in cover and at long range, and I keep my 2 2 being annoying, always trying to bleed him. I also spot the AT gun right there. So I bring the 2 2 over to this side, so that the AT gun has to follow my 2 2 He's also trying to fire through the edge row, which isn't easy. He does get the shot off. I notice that I now have my first Grenadier upgraded, and now I can start being really aggressive. So, one Conscript ba uh, just went back to base, another Conscript is right here. I also know that he's the uh, Dishka, and his Engineer is right here. And I know that he just has the, this Soul Engineer right here. So this is a prime opportunity to try to get a hold of his AT gun or get it to back off, and that's exactly what I do. Again, it's important that you keep track of where his units are, so you know where he's weak at. I spot his MG right here. I also know that I have two units coming back from base. 
And I know that this 2-2-2 two -two -two can freely arrest the Conscript Squad. Because he's a Tegan, he's being followed around my, by my Grenadier. Again, I try to retreat right away right here, but he still gets the burst off. But you want to retreat as early as possible right there. Now he needs to get his MG back to base. It's getting uh, fired in two fronts. I'm also bleeding his conscript squad right here. And I'm I'm thinking again because I have the advantage that I want to go for his cutoff, and that's exactly what this grenadier will do. Notice that even though last uh, video I said that you want to win the engagements first and then cap the map. Right now I'm not doing this. I did that in the early game. I won the engagements and then I capped the map. But right now I'm so far ahead that I can just keep being annoying and decapping his points. And have my 2-2-2 do a lot of the work. I also saw that he overextended with the conscript squad, so this is an easy pick off. And there we go. Battle phase uh, 2 up as well. Again, decap. I'm suppressed, I don't want to bleed manpower, so I retreat to spot instantly. MG is. If you have two MGs, um, and you have this kind of advantage. It's uh, very nice to always um, put them in a the corner of the map. And if your opponent wants to get this side back, then he needs to send two squads over. And that's really annoying for him because you can't do any mini meaningful progression on the other side of the map. If he has to send two units to a corner. I see that he wants to kill my 2 2 so I just back off. Again, reinforcing. He's still trying to follow my 2 2 around. MG is still maintaining that VP. The enemy is taking our territory. This Pioneer bleeds me some manpower, but it's still worth it. I just spot where every unit is. I know that the MG is right there. I know that he doesn't have any other conscript squads right now supporting that MG as well. And now I start to do a pincer maneuver, kinda. This grenadier just got this one back to base. I can expect his MG to, to be around here and trying to move here to defend the cutoff. So these two are going through the front line, you could say. MG bunches up. This is an easy grenade. And that MG basically gets killed. And this is where he throws in the towel. So, to kind of do a little uh, resume of what happened and what you should do early game as Austria. Again, this replay didn't go to the mid game and didn't go to the late game. And I would say this is kind of a, like a, a perfect start for Austria right here, which is why I picked this replay and not another one. Because first I want to show what an ideal start should be for us here. Um, so, again, as Austria, it's really important that you keep the engineer near the MG in the beginning of the game. And it's really important that your pioneer is always trying to spot where uh, meaningful units are. If you're playing against Soviets, that's going to be the conscripts. If you're playing against USF, that's going to be the riflemen. Then um, you want to keep at least one Grenadier with the MG after. In my case, I capped two points in the early game right here and then I brought my Grenadier and the second Grenadier over to my MG. Because the lost condition is if you can get that MG back to your base early. That's what you don't want to happen. Then all I did was keep the Grenadiers at long range. I kept track of where his units were because as Austria, if you get flanked or you're out of position, um, 
it's really hard for you to win the engagement back. You really need to have the units in position. Then I basically, I kept my patience up and I waited for his units that were in green cover to slowly lose the engagement because grenadiers at long range just win the engagement anyways, uh, if, if they both are in green cover. And my MG also firing at green cover, you can expect that at some point the squad is going to get suppressed. And then the pioneer moves in. So, be patient, try to slowly cap the map. If you are too greedy and you move too early without having at least one unit retreat back to base, then it's really risky for you to move up the map. And you don't want to be caught off guard as Osir because Osir is a faction that probably has the most difficulties coming back into the map after your opponent gets you back to base. So. The other thing you should look forward to is um, getting that 2-2 to -two out as soon as possible. And that's why it's really important that you don't bleed manpower early, or if you do, you're winning something with it. The 2-2-2 two -two -two is the unit that is probably the light vehicle that arrives the fastest, and it's the light vehicle that your opponent is going to have a tough time countering when it gets out. Um... Especially if he's trying to tech, which is something that all Soviet players usually try to do, is tech to the T-70. And they can't use the resources on countering the 2-2-2 right away. If they do, and if you see a teenage out before the T-70 is out, that means he delayed the T-70 just to try to get, get your 2-2-2. And even if he loses the 2-2-2 because of that, it's already... It's not that bad that you lost it because he teched the teenage, because that means that his big unit is delayed. Again, you don't want to lose the T the two 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 anyways, but yeah, uh, the two 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 is also a very good way to bleed your opponent, um, and again, kind of scout, kind of scout him out on what he's doing tech wise. Um, now, usually, the game doesn't go this well, so that that's the idea that you have for the first ten to fifteen minutes of the match. But most of the time that's not going to go this well and you're going to need to build a pack. So after the 2-2-2 two, 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 you usually build a pack straight away and that's the plan. And if you pick this commander then you want to start also avoiding munition losses. So you can have the, the, the Grenadiers be upgraded to a 5-man status. So yeah, that's what I want people to take away from this, this replay in the early game for Austria. Again. I think that the most important factor more so uh, in Austria than other factions is not to bleed Grenadier models because they are very costly to reinforce. So yeah, uh, next replay that I bring up of Austria, I want it to be a little bit a more difficult game and I want possibly a replay that gets to the late game stages because I didn't get to do that here. Uh, I just wanted to show kind of a perfect scenario for us the early game. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.